No niin, mulla on täällä Laupias taksikuski elokuvan ohjaaja, käsikirjoittaja Tonislav Fristov. Äh, hauska nähdä sut täällä ja siis todella erinomainen elokuva. Kiitos paljon siitä. Äh, en siltä lähestyy. Mitkä fiilikset? Um, nice talking to you again. It's, um, yeah, it's, I'm very excited. I'm very happy to show our film in Helsinki. It's gonna be the the first country where the film is going to go to cinemas. Mm-hmm. Uh, the film has been already to some festivals, like internationally to many festivals, but uh, it's a Finland, Sweden, Bulgaria co-production. So it goes first to cinemas in Finland, then I think in May goes to Sweden, and then two months later in Bulgaria in cinemas. So I'm very excited to see how the audience will react on, on the film. Yeah. Because to me, this film is a very personal story. Mm since I've spent half of my life in Finland and Bulgaria, like the main character. So I'm really eager to see how the people felt about it. Kyllä. Uh, tosta onkin hyvä kysyä, että niin, niin, millaista oli tämmöinen, niin kun, kun uh, rahoitus tulee kolmesta maasta ja ilmeisesti kuvaukset oli kahdessa, niin millainen se tasapainottelu sitten oli? Ja Huomasitko mitään merkittäviä eroja vaikkapa suomalaisten näyttelyiden ja bulgarilaisten näyttelyiden välillä tai ylipäätänsä niin kuin työntekijöiden? I think that in, in our industry, like in cinema, when there is professionals, there are professionals everywhere. So uh, when I was directing the scene between uh, Malin Krustev, who is the Bulgarian very famous actor, mm. and then Alma Pelosti, who is a very good Finnish actor, This was the easiest job I did. Ah, but it was yeah. so easy because they were so good, both of them. So it was like, <laughs> no work here to be done. <laughs> yep. But uh, but of course, the process wasn't easy because, as I mentioned, I, I've mixed in the telling of the story so many so many realities, like non-professional actors and yep. and really this kind of non-professional professionals scenes, and it's it's it's, it's a bit challenging to kind of mm-hmm. balance the whole thing and to have a good film. But I believe that we involved so much these kind of non-professional elements and they brought authenticity, authenticity or like mm. kind of realism to the story, which makes it much more cosketava, much more touching. Yeah. Because I believe that, yeah, depending on, on, on your tools you use, one story told two different ways, it can touch you two different ways, you know. So I think that the, the documentary, the realism that I used, it makes the film stronger. Kyllä, joo, ja siis niin kuin jotenkin tosi nätisti kuitenkin kaikki meni yhteen, että ei, ei sinne katsellessa ajattele, että onko joku ammattilainen vai ei, vaan se kaikki niin, kuin niin luonnollisen oloisesti menee yhteen, mm-hmm. että todella niin kuin upeaa työtä. Uh, Musta oli hyvin mielenkiintoista, että miten sä kuvasit Bulgariaa sun kotimaata tässä. Että niin kun siellä selvästikin on todella paljon kauneutta. Mä huomasin semmoisia yksityiskohtia, jotka varmasti niin kun, ö, menee multa suomalaisena ohi tavallaan. Jotain kulttuurillisia seikkoja ja tällaisia. Ja se tuntui niin tosi eläväiseltä. Mutta sitten samaan aikaan mun oli mielenkiintoista, että tässä elokuvassa oli niin kun hyvin kylmät värit sillä lailla. Joka tavallaan mun mielestä kuvasi sitä ö, päähenkilön mielenmaisemaa. Ja sitten musta oli mielenkiintoista, että kaikki halusi siinä pois Bulgariasta. Jopa niin kun kaikki ne yöklubit, oli nimetty näiden niin kun, yeah. ää, yes. ulkomaiden uh, mukaan. Spanish, like kind of palaja. Jep, yeah, kyllä. Yeah. Mitäs ajatuksia tää, tässä oli takana ikään kuin? Well, you know, when we were doing most of the film, or like quite big part of the film, in this, let's say, sunny beach resort, which is really touristic place, mm. There is one kind of flavor, like people want to be like their guests, you know, like rich, throwing money around, drinking yep. and, you know, doing crazy stuff. But also, like they idolize, but at the same time hate these tourists, you know, mm, because of this like. what they are. Yep. Super arrogant and just going there, not respecting what's there and, you yep. know, don't, not caring also. But... Um, I don't know, to me it's it's really interesting because I don't, Bulgaria to me it's not a place people want to live mm. or go away. It's a place that they want to be better 
like other places. I want. In reality, Bulgaria, it's to me also, uh, as in Finland, but it's a beautiful place. Mm, cool. It just things which are on very political level, they are not on human level, on political level, gets better. Then, of course, people will be happier. And it's not, and it's not uncommon that the biggest amount of unhappy people in the world are based there. About Bulgaria, I do believe that people want to just have a better life. Mm. It's a very simple wish. And because somehow the change never properly happened, we never in Bulgaria moved from the communism to post-communism democracy, somehow this change didn't work out. And people are still in between, although there is almost a half lifetime mm. passed. So um, people are just not happy how the, in general, politics work out because it never went like for example other countries like I don't know Czech Republic or Croatia or stuff they they managed to move even Romania I would say they managed to move further mm. but somehow Bulgaria was stuck because there is so much influences from all over like from Russia and from everywhere there is influence yeah. there in, in politics so it's very 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 hard it's good that we are part of EU it's good that we are part of NATO apparently mm. now because I cannot even imagine if we were not what was going to happen. Yeah. So, I like the, uh, to me, Bulgaria is of course homeland and, and I love it. I love the country, I love the, the people, but it's just tough times. Mm -hmm. You could see also like in just basic numbers, like when there was the COVID pandemic, Bulgaria was number one death in oh, the world. Yeah. Just because there was so much fake news and then so much influence from mm. other people. You know, and it, it, it drives me crazy. Like. How the hell we are worse than a third world countries? You yep. know? So political situation is not great, and um, of course the film it's quite dark in that mm -hmm. sense, in that manner. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I imagine just this story is quite dark. Of course, there's so much good and light stories there, yep. so to be told. Yeah, yeah. Must tuntuu että vähän tällä päähenkilölläkin oli ehkä se, että hänen olisi pitänyt oppia se, että niin niin. Uh, hyvää elämää voi löytyä myös Bulgaariasta. Hänellä oli koko ajan se, että pitää päästä sinne Suomeen ja siellä kaikki muuttuu sitten maagisesti ja sitten kun yeah. se pääsee sinne totuus, ei ehkä olekaan ihan niin. Yeah, and this is the thing about the main character that I like that he also wanted to go abroad and have a better life and he came to Finland, but he didn't make it. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a people, who, a woman who loves him, he has a son, he has a family. Then he still felt that this is not his home and he ran back mm -hmm. there telling that I need to help my mother but then at the end you realize and he realizes that actually this is the family that matters but sometimes it's too late yeah. when you break something in real life also it doesn't get automatically fixed maybe never get fixed you never know but it's what I like about the real life which I as I mentioned it's part of this film that sometimes things don't get great at the end like in movies yep. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes the movies don't get fantastic at the end it's Nimenomaan. not about flowers and champagne and you know yep. it's just life it just yeah. doesn't get se you toimii hyvin tällä elokuvalla koska se oli muista rehellistä yeah. Uh, yksi, mitä on viime vuosina puhuttu paljon, niin, niin uh, sosiaalisessa mediassa, mediassa ylipäätään se on niin sanottu toksinen maskuliinisuus. Ja mun mielestä niin, niin, tässä elokuvassa se tulee erittäin vahvasti esiin, kun puhutaan tästä päähenkilöstäkin, niin, niin hän on hyvin herkkästi sortuu väkivaltaan siinä. Hän itse niin, niin, joutuu väkivallan uhriksi pian ja sitten siinä niin, niin, puhutaan siitä, miten hänen isänsä on jättänyt yeah. hänet, hän on jättänyt omaa yeah. ja paljon tällaista. Niin, niin, Uh, oliko tällaiset asiat sulla mielessä itse, ja kun sä itsekin oot isä, niin, niin millaista viestiä sä tässä niin kun lähet sitten uh, antamaan maailmalle? You know, I never think, you know, like, because I've been living in Finland and everywhere, I never think of myself as, as a, you know, as, it might sound really ridiculous, but as a white, middle-aged, mm. heterosexual man, you know, yep. I never... I never put myself in any of these boxes, mm. like never. Yeah. And it's, I never do films that categorize, of course they are, but I did, for example, my last documentary was The Magic Life of V. It was about a girl, young girl, that mm -hmm. was abused by her father, and then she finds a gay, lesbian friend that it's, you know, it's all, I don't care, you know, really, yeah. to me stories are stories, they're about emotions, and to me what is important is family mm, and kyllä. the price of being part of a family and this film is about this it's about the family and what 
you don't get it automatically. You should work for it. Good. It's not that you just you're born with it and they're gonna stay forever there. No, if you don't take care of your family, this family will break, mm. and sometimes you cannot fix it. So this to me was really important message. It's like you have to fight for your family. Joo, musta toi tuli myös hyvin esiin siinä elokuvassa, koska niin, niin se mitä hän tää päähenkilö tässä ei tehnyt oli just se, että hän ei työskentellyt sen perheensä eteen, vaan hän mm. niin kun, ajatteli just sitä, että niin kun, hän työskentelee rahan eteen ja se mm. ratkaisee sitten kaiken. Yeah. yeah, and this is a thing a little bit, um, because sometimes, again it's not gender, it's not men or female, mm. but we think that we can fix everything with money. Yep. And then the reality is that money doesn't matter in mm. most of the cases. I do believe that sometimes being yourself involved emotionally is enough yep. to make things happen. I don't believe in that the amount of money you make will make you happier. I believe that amount of love you have behind around you that makes you happy. Kyllä. And um, as I said just one hour ago, it's like of course I'm I'm very proud of the work and happy to make films. To me the family is number one. Toivottavasti niin kauan siis sanottu, että siihen voidaan lopettaa. Joo. Kiitos tosi paljon. Oli huikea elokuva ja uh, katsojille menkää kaikki katsomaan. On Laupias taksikuski ihan pian on ensi illassa Suomessa ja erinomainen elokuva. Kiitos paljon. Kiitos.